WCNY's Financial Fitness is made possible by our members. Well, listen, uh, we have Aaron on the line uh, from Casanova who has a great question that fits right into, into where we are in the conversation. So, Aaron, go right ahead. All right. Well, I hope it's a good question because I'd like to have a better understanding of, you know, who is an employee and who is a subcontractor. And the point of my question is um, there are so many obligations on an employer when they hire an employee um, and as well, the employee is dumbed down and trained to think in terms of just doing what you're told and go home and have no greater, uh, say, skin in the game in the company. Um, consider, say, just a supermarket, even a small one, if they were to subcontract the cashiers and the stock people, you know, each one as an individual contractor versus being an employee. Well, any thoughts on, on that area? And I'll, I'll, I'll take the answer on well, here. Thank you. Sure. I, I'll take, I'll at least start. Yeah, you started one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, <clears throat> that's a great question. Um, a lot of uh, early stage startups try to reduce costs by hiring freelancers and not uh, having to worry about withholdings. And they 1099 them at the end of the year and the person gets paid and it's their responsibility to worry about their withholdings. Um, Microsoft, <clears throat> to use an example, um, made such a habit out of using contractors. There was a book written about it by one of them uh, called Microsurfs that <laughs> became really, really uh, famous. And it led to uh, some IRS changes that you would be better positioned to talk about than me. But now there is a 19-question checklist. And to the degree that you control the, empl the worker's day, and to the degree that you direct them and you control what they do, they are more and more on the employee side of the ledger uh -huh. and less and less a true freelancer. A freelancer has the ability to walk away from the job. They have other projects they might work on. You don't own them, you know? And so there's this 19-question checklist that was developed uh, that you might be able to look up online, Aaron, uh, to, to give you some guidance on that. There actually is a form the IRS puts out, I believe it's SS8, that you go through the checklist and to see if a person's an independent contractor, but most of the time they're not. I mean, the reason why you want to be an independent contractor, Aaron, a lot of what you're saying is to give them the, the incentive to do more. Well, you got the IRS, you've got the State Unemployment Department, you've got the State Workers' Compensation Division all out looking for people that are trying to treat their true employees as independent contractors. Um, it's, it is not a good way to go these days. You're much better off hiring people that are employees as employees and giving them some other way to incentivize them, paying them in different, in different ways, coming up with an, a way to make them part of the business and to help you be successful, but to, as many ways as possible, avoid the independent contractor status because for the most of the time, it's they're not independent contractors. Okay. Most of my clients that want to put their people as independent contractors, they're really not independent contractors. Like you said, they have control. They want them to show up at a certain time, leave at a certain time, do their business in a certain way, and it's a control factor. And as soon as you get control over them, they're an employee. All right. So if, if I call my, if I have my employees coming in at 7 o'clock in the morning and tell them they can't leave till 5 o'clock at night, and they must make sure they get these tasks done, during that eight-hour period, they're probably not independent contractors. Slam dunk, they're not. Okay, all right, slam dunk. Is that